There was another memorable exchange that happened at another vice presidential debate. Jonathan, this one in 1988, that was a debate between Lloyd Benson and Dan Quayle. It is not just age, it's accomplishments, it's experience. I have far more experience than many others that sought the office of vice president of this country. I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. I will be prepared to deal with the people in the Bush administration if that unfortunate event would ever occur. Senator Benson. Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. All right, Larry, to your point that the American people elect a president, I can't think of another exchange in any debate, uh, with the exception perhaps of Ronald Reagan and Walter Mondale about not exploiting my candidate's age for political purposes, that has stayed with the American people as opposed to that one. Well, that is certainly uh, the most famous snippet from all the vice presidential debates put together. And it's an example of how they evolved with preparation. The Lloyd Benson staff had studied uh, a number of tapes of, of uh, Dan Quayle on the stump, and he had used that comparison with John F. Kennedy several times. And so they realized he might have occasion to use it at the debate. They had prepared that response in advance. And it was devastating for Dan Quayle. Had no effect on the election. The election was a very solid margin for George H.W. Bush over Michael Dukakis. But this just destroyed Dan Quayle's career. I don't think he ever really recovered from it. By the time he ran for president in 1996 as a former vice president, uh, he got a handful of votes, a handful. Mm. Jonathan, what did you make of that? Well, I, I, th I think what's interesting here is the best debate moments are, genuinely, are generally a combination between preparation and genuine emotion. So as Larry just said, that was a pre-canned moment. They were waiting for Quayle to make the Kennedy comparison. They had it lined up that Benson would deliver the line. That said, if you look at Benson's face in that clip, you can tell he really means it. Yeah. And he's able to pull off the whole moment because this is something that he genuinely feels. And I think that is the sort of rare sweet spot that creates these big moments that everyone remembers, where there's a, a, a very complicated idea that gets distilled down to a single image and it comes from somewhere genuine within the candidate's heart. Doug, I don't know if you can offer any recollection, having been very close with the Bush family, if there was a moment where everybody just said, oh, no, that killed us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you uh, Robert Dalek's book actually uh, challenges the idea that Benson and Kennedy were that close as friends. <laughs> but the, but that it was would ruin a good the moment. myth, Doug. That would ruin the myth. We're not into, you know, we're not into real historical facts here. We want myth. <laughs> but I agree with what uh, has just been said, and Larry and others said that they know if they know the line's coming, they'll hit a home run. Uh, Ronald Reagan, he knew that line was coming from the last debate, and nobody could stop him. His opponent wouldn't give him the line, but there was going to be a moderator give it, set it up. And Quayle should have known that that was coming. I noticed that the Dukakis Bush debates, not too many clips from them. And that speaks to the lack of errors, which was very important in all that work and all that preparation. You don't want to go in the history books with a flop. You, you want history to kind of ignore uh, your debates and you want to win them.